Welcome to another South Central Regional Library video. Hi, I'm Linda and I'm a librarian who sometimes sews. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. This shirt front apron leans into that classic tailored style and looks good with just about everything. Now, before we get started, I was having all kinds of autos focus issues today, so sorry, hope it's not too distracting. Okay, back to the video. This version has all finished self-bound edges and a split in the back of the collar to make it easy to get on and off without pulling it over your head. For me, this is the sweet spot between ease of use, durability, looks, and minimum materials. Your priorities might be different. I'll point out some of the variations as we go along. For this version, you'll need a large button front shirt. Make sure it's big enough that the bottom hem comes down to about mid thigh and matching thread. You'll also need a small piece of hook and eye tape. For the variations, you'll need bias tape in a complementary color and ribbon or twill tape. For equipment, you'll need a sewing machine, pins, hand needle and pin cushion, scissors, a ruler, something to draw lines with, in this case a piece of bar soap, but Taylor's chalk or pencil works, and an iron. The first step is cutting out the front. Lay your shirt out flat. Cut on the inside front of the seam along the side seams from the bottom hem up to the underarm seam. Cut on the inside of the seam on the same side of the seam as the buttons, if that makes sense. Now find and draw a line from the point where the side seam meets the underarm to the point where the collar meets the shirt front. You might need to tweak this line a little so the line doesn't go through your underarm seam. Draw or mark the line. Mark the line. Autofocus goes a little crazy. And cut along it. Then cut along the line where the collar meets the back of the shirt. Repeat all these cuts on the other side and this is the front of your apron. If you want a simpler seam finishing method, instead of cutting on the front side of the seam, cut on the back side. The folded hem will provide enough protection to the edge, although it will fray a little bit. Cut along the line where the collar meets the shirt front for about 2 centimeters on each side. Then, to finish the diagonal cut edge, fold it over a centimeter, press it down, fold it over again, pin, and sew it in place. And now, all those edges are finished. The next step is splitting the collar. Match the front edges of the collar and find the middle. Mark that point top and bottom, and then cut straight between those two marks. This split will let you put the apron on without needing to pull it over your head. You can skip this step completely, just make sure that the opening in front is big enough to get your head through. Now, more cutting. Cut off the sleeves following the shoulder seam. Cut on the sleeve side of the stitch line. Next, cut the sleeve open along the long seam and then cut off the cuffs. Lay it out flat, then measure and cut out a 10 centimeter wide strip from the center of the longest part of each sleeve and set it aside. Next, lay out the back of the shirt so you can cut diagonal or bias strips for binding your cut edges. Aim for 45 degrees across the grain of the fabric. A bit off is okay though. Cutting on the diagonal gives you some stretch and also keeps the edges from fray. So what I'm doing here, I'm measuring a square in the corner of the fabric, laying the ruler across the opposite corners and using this to start my first line. Then once this line has been extended to the other edge of the back, 
I measure and mark 5 centimeters from the line in a few places, and then I connect the marks to make additional lines. Now cut out the strips. You'll need enough length to cover all your cut edges from the bottom hem up the side along the diagonal and around the corner and the back split. You'll need this for both sides. Mine is about 95 centimeters aside. Set the bias strips aside for a moment and cut out an 8 centimeter square from your remaining fabric for the collar closure. You can skip cutting the bias strips and ties and just buy bias tape and twill tape instead. In that case, you'll also skip the step of turning bias strips into bias tape. Also, if you're going for the simpler seam finishes I mentioned earlier, you can skip all the bias tape steps too because you're already done with finishing the edges. Alright, time to start sewing. Well, sort of. We start with some little short bits of sewing as well as a bunch of pressing. First of all, the bias tape. Take the 5 cm strips and put them right sides together, crossing at right angles. Pin and sew them together across the strip from point to point. Repeat until the piece is long enough to go from top of collar to bottom of side hem plus a bit extra. As I said, mine is about 95 cm, so two strips would have been plenty. Once you've done that, iron the seams open and then trim them. Yes, I did this the wrong way round, and I regret it. I'm also trimming up the edges so that they move more smoothly. Now, fold the strip in half long ways, wrong sides together, and press. Fold the edges in towards into that middle fold again, and press again. Repeat all the way along and that's your bias tape. While you're ironing, take your 10 centimeter wide strips, your ties, fold each one right sides together, right sides together, long ways, and press. And take the 8 centimeter square, match the edges, and do the same. Back to the sewing machine. Sew each tie and the square together along one short end, starting from the folded edge, and then along the long edge. Do this for the collar strap as well. Now clip across the corners to cut down on bulk and turn each of these inside out. They are wide enough for their length that you should be able to do this without too much difficulty or needing special tools. Once you've got them turned inside out and pressed, I would recommend pressing, Turn the inside edge, the top inside edge in, fold over, and then sti top stitch around all four sides so it lies nice and flat. Sew the loop side of the Velcro to one end of the collar strap. And now we're into the home stretch, finishing the edges and adding the ties. What we're doing here is sewing on the bias tape to enclose the cut edges to keep them from fraying. So this long edge has a number of corners and corners take a little extra tape to navigate. So that means a bit of pre-planning to make sure things go reasonably smoothly. My way of doing it is wrong, but you can do this if you want. If you want to do it the right way, there are other tutorials online. I basically pre-measure by leaving the bias tape folded laying it in place as I go, sort of smooshing it on so it encloses the edge. I'm loosely pinning it in place as I go. When I get to a corner, I pin it close to the corner, wrap the tape around, and for an outside corner, I want the middle fold to be lying flat on the edge. And then I pin it right after the corner. When I get to an inside corner, I pin it just before that edge, push the tape in place and make sure that the outside edge or the folds closer to the middle are lying flat. And then I continue to push the tape in place and pin it as I go. Usually there's some excess on the inside going around an outside corner and excess on the outside if I'm going around an inside corner that all needs to get tucked away or folded neatly or something like that. Once it's pinned in place, 
sew down both edges at once. So leave about a centimeter sticking out at the top and the bottom. Then start sewing about two centimeters down from the top and your stitch line should be about a centimeter from the side, kind of close to the edge of the bias tape. Go slowly. Use your fingers to tug the tape in place, but not too much, and to feel if the edge is in place on the other, on the underside. Going slow and keeping your fingers out of the way of the needle are your keys to success here. You'll probably end up with a bit of curl at the edges, and there might be a spot you miss on the underside, like right there by my thumb. But you can hand sew that later, and honestly, the curled edges don't bother me that much. And this is more or less what it looks like. To finish the ends, trim off any excess beyond a centimeter. To sew it in place, stitch along the side edge on the front, make sure the top folds match, and sew them together. Then tuck in any last corners with the point of your needle and sew down the side edge on the back. Next, sew the apron ties to the corners. Line them up so they're fairly straight from the edge, right angles to the body of the apron, and pin them from the underside, because you'll be sewing them from the wrong side. Next, you want to add the closure to the split collar. Take the collar strap and turn it so the Velcro is facing up. Pin the non-Velcroed edge to the underside of the collar. Then, bring the edges of the collar together Pull the strap across so that there's no slack, and mentally mark the spot where the Velcro sits. In my case, it lines up with that edging. Then, sew the strip in place, and sew the ties in place. I usually sew the ties as a box, going around the four edges, and then occasionally going it diagonally across for a little extra security. Then, as I say, sewing the collar strap in place, you'll notice that I've moved the strap to the collar stand from the underside of the collar. It just seems to work better. And here, I'm just sewing around in a box, not bothering with the diagonals. Now I'm eyeballing where that Velcro is supposed to go, tucked right up against the bias tape, and sewing it in place as well. And now finally, sew along the outside of the button placket. This helps keep the two sides together, keeps them from gapping and stuff getting through. If you're not splitting the collar, only sew the placket about halfway up. This way, you'll have plenty of room to get your head through the collar loop without flattening your face. And you're done. You have a stylish, tailored apron you can give as a gift or use for yourself. And it's a look that works for just about anyone. Thank you for joining us for the South Central Regional Library video. See you in the next one.